I'm told that the band gets the white chairs and I get the brown one. Um, so that you would know what's going on. Welcome guys, it's, a, it's very cool to be a part of this. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Thank Book Soup. What's the name of the book company? Aza? Akashic. Thank those guys, Akashic. I thank Bootling. Um, so, I, uh, I had Molly write some questions, Molly uh, from the book company. Uh, so let's start out with some of her questions and then, well, let's introduce everybody. Introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Mac. I'm David Young. And I'm David Sims. So, why, well, let me ask you a personal question. Um, do you like to cook? Me? me? Yeah. I do like to cook. What's your favorite pizza here? My favorite pizza? Yeah, here in Ollie. My favorite pizza? Your favorite pizza? Um, it's not a joke, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Pepperoni and jalapeno. But from where? Pepperoni and jalapeno. From anywhere? <laughs> like masa? Oh yeah, awesome. Well, because uh, I'm gonna let the, the people here. We we've, we've only eaten uh, pizza together. That's true. We uh, yeah, we did Casa Bianca or Masa. Which is your favorite? Out of those two, I prefer Masa. The deep dish. Yeah. All right, good. Good to know. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for coming out. <laughs> you guys, you've done this in Boston. You've done this in Brooklyn. In New York and Chicago? And Austin. And Austin. In all those places, what's the best question you got? Like your own personal question. Um, can I give you a blowjob? That's a great question. That's a great question. Some other questions? Any questions you remember? We were good. You remember questions? Alright, do you have a favorite question? Okay, well I'll just ask you right here, what's your favorite color, your favorite animal? What uh here's one of them. Do you have a favorite album of yours? And if so, why? And then the follow-up question will be, do you like any record now? It's not yours. Too much to answer. Well, a similar question was asked uh, in one of the other uh, events, and I don't have one particular uh, record that's a favorite of ours. I, I like a lot of, all of them really for different reasons, and that's the honest truth, so I, I don't really have a favorite. Um, maybe these guys do. They did it. Well, I don't really have a favorite. I like all of them for different reasons. Um, but that's kind of true. Like your children. Uh, uh, the one, whichever one of them I'll trick is the best record. I don't know which one to say. Which one to go with? Go with the code. Okay. Got a And, yeah, I mean, I think I probably, if I had to pick a one, it would be really shot. But I don't. I mean, I kind of hate to ask people. I'm mean, just proud of all of them. I love them all. Let's go back to these questions. 
How do you think the music scene has changed since you guys were, were first coming up? Yeah. Um, well, it's gotten a lot worse. <laughs>
When was the last time you guys did uh, cooking? Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah? Yeah. How about you, Davis? 2000? 2000? I mean, not since Okay. It's been several months. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do it great. Thank you. 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 I'm Tan. You're a Tan? Yeah. You're from the... I'm from Chile. 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 Well, you yeah, have even more Tan than normal. Yeah. Um... Wait, what were you just talking about? Cocaine. Okay. Cocaine, okay, right. <laughs> So I saw I saw your show. Uh, I think it was three years ago at uh, the Henry Ford. Oh yeah, Fonda. Henry <laughs> Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Would you perform at the Henry Ford show? <laughs> at the, at the Henry Ford <laughs> Theater of Okay. Yeah, at the, at the Henry Ford. Fonda. Henry Fonda. Right. You you were you were fantastic. It was one of the best shows I've ever seen, I think, and uh, since actually, and uh, and that looked like was that the last time you played together as a group, or do you plan to play together again? Yeah, we don't have any plans to play together. Yeah, it would be surprising if we don't play together again, but it wouldn't surprise me necessarily if we did. Uh, 
have to send them in. We had a lot of photos. I took a lot of photos back in the day. David took a lot of photos back in the day. And yeah, we did kind of put out a call over the various social media platforms and got people were very generous. Now when you see the book in a bookstore, or you see it now up there, like what do you what are you most proud of about that book? What do you think is it's cool that that's that's a document out there to like you I think you said this, you said that your uh, your band is, is is famous for not making it and you have a few fans that are uninformed. And so, yeah, like when you see when you were working on this book, um, what did you think? Like, what, what's different about this book? What new information? I guess what's good for the fans to to get from this book? Like, that's a different question. But I am kind of curious what you think of the book yourself. Like, I'm sure you're happy that someone put these pictures together uh, as a as a kind of a document of of a time. <laughs> but yeah, what do you what's what do you feel about it? Well, I like it because it, uh, I, I think for uh, people that already like the band, they get uh, some insight into uh, the early childhood uh, misadventures and uh, some of the formative years and things like that. And then, you know, I like it personally because you get to see what some of the other musicians at the time were, maybe their take on the band, what they thought, how they were, uh, Impacted with what they're, you know, what they, what they thought. So, and do you have like people, bands come up to you and thank you or, or say that they were influenced by your music? Oh yeah, well this this little book promotional tour we're doing now in Austin and New York and Brooklyn and Chicago and then this is the last of the night. And after the moderated talk, the Q and A, we have had this little this signing thing. And uh, David and I were talking about it earlier how. Um, a lot of these folks are very, very sincere, and they're saying, you know, thanks a lot, you're band and a lot to me, or whatever, and it's really nice to hear that. But then when you're doing the book signing thing, it's kind of like a, you know, a, um, uh, assembly line, and it's like, well, that's great to know, next. And so it's, it's, um, it's, it's hard it's, to give them what they want, maybe. Right, well it has to happen really quickly, but it's really nice. And, yeah, there's a lot of people that seem really grateful and really nice and look, I mean, look at these. They came all the way and they live miles from here. <laughs> well, for one, um, Adam McKay, the writer of the uh, Anchorman's, is a, is a huge fan of yours. Yeah. And, uh, and we went, he went to the concert, the same concert that, that we saw. And uh, I mean, I think he would say that you guys are an influence. I think the music is very... Didn't he? I think he proposed to his wife that Jesus is a Is that true? Uh, it might be. It's true. That's what Shri told me. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, they were married and they're still married. So it was they are still married. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but yeah, so the music is, uh, it's particularly, like you're saying, like all the music sucks now. What? Like you touched upon it a little bit, but what about the music now? Like, is it still like that? What like you touched upon a little bit, but what about the music now is, is uh, not good, in your opinion. Like, what, what is happening? I know the music industry is kind of fucked up, but, but you're saying the music itself, there's just not a lot of variety, or? I'm not sure there's a lot of variety, but I just don't pay any attention. I don't, I don't seek it out, I don't, I don't, I'm not interested. Yeah, I mean, it, it is hard to find bands that, that are, you know, just destructive. In the sense, like it was just like a, like the, the show made you feel like you want to like jump off the balcony and get in there. Um, and so that that power that power of that music isn't around I guess that much. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm trying to say there's so much music. I mean, it's so much easier you know, when you're making records back in the day. To make a record, you had to go into an expensive recording studio and spend a lot of time and so. 
a daunting and intimidating and expensive process. And as a result, there were, there were far few, fewer records out there. Now, basically, anybody with a laptop can make a record. And I'm sure there's as many or many more great albums out there. But I just find it so hard to wade through the chat to find a really good record. And it's kind of, it's kind of become daunting trying to keep up with what the good stuff is. I'm really qualified to answer what's out there anymore. I kind of just don't try to keep up. What would you listen to? Whatever's on iTunes, you know, soundtrack stuff and stuff that I've liked for a long time. Every once in a while I come across a few new things. Like I said, if I tried it, I'm sure I would know about more about things, but it's just, I just don't have that motivation right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could understand that. You guys played for many years and you put out a lot of music, so, like, maybe trying to check out new music, it's like, all right, I've, I've, I've been in the business a long time, I want to, like, Watch cartoons or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, don't you, do you do you feel like like oh, I, I, we did we did it already? Like, or are there goals for the band? Other goals for the band? Other yeah, other goals for the band. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was good. Question. Share some of your favorite stories from the road. Well, you did that a little bit. More. Um, More. More. The road, Lollapalooza, touring in general. You guys, I'm sure you're asked a lot. To okay, I got one. Okay, great, cool. Uh, when we did Lollapalooza in 1995, the first show that we did was in the Gores in, in, in Washington State. And um, uh, Sinead O'Connor was on the bill. At the time, I think she quit like four shows or something to it, but whatever. And uh, at that particular venue, we had a, we shared a trailer with her, and we had our little room, and she had her little room. And um, I don't know what she looks like now, but back then, I'd seen pictures of her in videos, and I thought, oh, she's pretty. In real life, she's fucking gorgeous, really, really beautiful. And she came in our room wearing nothing but a little slip and a bra. And asked if we had a, if I had any safety pins, and I, I, I didn't. But I took a box of safety pins to her in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> did she remember? It's very romantic. Did she remember that uh, did she, she needed a safety pin the night before? Yes, she did. Yeah. Um, so did anything happen between you guys that evening? Um, you know, but. That's, no. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that question was, I thought you were going to go south on that one. Well, I think also at, at that very next one, um, George Wynn was there. And we were I was backstage, and he went walking by, and uh, I had a bottle of whiskey in my hand, and he was drinking a beer, and I said, hey, you want some whiskey? And he was like, I was crazy. <laughs> I think he just was serious. And it had been raining, and there was, uh, they had used um, sheets of plywood to uh, cover up the mud to go from the backstage area to the stage. And uh, uh, Courtney Love was concerned that, um, there, that there were splinters in the wood. And so she, I saw her tell a security guard that they needed to do something about that. And I told the same security guard, also watch out for all the needles. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and then on that same trip, <laughs> I think we were in Indianapolis, I'm not sure. Courtney came in the room, burst into the room, like, Ooh, where's, where's the good looking one? She was she's looking for Dwayne. She thought Dwayne was the only good looking one. <laughs> and, uh, and she said to me, uh, she, uh, she was, Hey, I heard you like to play Scrabble. <laughs> and I, said, I said, yeah, I'll kick your ass in Scrabble any day of the week. And she said, well, I don't think so. You don't have to have the vocabulary I do. <laughs> and uh, did you guys play it? So? No, we did not. <laughs> I think it would make a cool like, pay-per-view thing to watch. <laughs> 
here next door and I'm not scrying on it. You're probably right. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, this is a nice question. Have you ever thought about what you'd do if you weren't giant rock stars? <laughs> Or what do you do? Or what do you like to do other than? What was the question? She said, have you ever thought about what you do if you weren't giant rock stars? Did the girl from Akashi say that to you? Yeah. No, she didn't send it to me. This is uh, some, someone who just work, works out here and wrote it down for me. Well, that's just silly. I think she works for them. Yeah. That's just silly. We're not going to answers. But you are someone, say, in an iconic group. You know, know you, remember you, like you, would, would really like to see you play again. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the horse. <laughs> well, the, the fact is that since we're not big rock stars, we just do what we do. So, what that is is what we're all doing daily. Right now, I'm teaching drums at the uh, School of Rock and really enjoying that. And I'm uh, working on music ideas and I'm uh, going to have a couple of things in Chicago. Uh, I've got two things working on right now, April and May. <laughs> two solo shows? Yeah, pretty, just much. Yeah, pretty, pretty much, yeah, working on like projects, yeah. So that's that's what we do when we're not being big rock stars since we're not. So. How about what are you doing? I know you're, you're an artist. You showed me some art, beautiful art. Uh, is that what you do most of the time now? Um, I'm trying. I'm focusing more on acting. I'm uh, focusing more on acting. I've done some paintings and I had some uh, art shows recently, and I have a little, a little cat book coming out in, in August. August. <laughs> and, um, but mostly acting. Yeah, I'm an actor. All right. Great. <laughs> I believe that. You're walking a walk. I'm good. Next month I'm going to England to um, shoot a movie that the, I got the lead role. And the lead pop was just uh, signed on to be a colleague of mine. That's fantastic. Uh, what's it called? A New York Story. That's why I'm shooting it in England. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, David, um, how are you keeping yourself busy? I'll tell you how I do it. Yeah, I'm the controller at a music management company in New York City. And I have like a little solo based project that I do here and there. Okay, so you all play music. Do you still play music when you're not? Or you don't play music? I don't. I don't. I had a solo record come out recently called Tonight You Look Like a Spider. It's a thing that I just did with Pro Tools. Um, starting out, it started, I think, in 1998. And finished in 2006 or something like that. And, um, it was like Chinese trigonometry or whatever. Chinese trigonometry. <laughs> the Guns N' Roses album. It took us 15 years to make. Yeah, it's called Chinese, yeah. Chinese democracy. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not comparing your work with that of Axel Rose. But sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it takes a long time. Yeah. Sometimes it, lots of things take a long time, and that's one of them. But uh, it was kind of, it was, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'll do that again. That was <laughs> a lot of trouble. It's a lot of trouble to, to make it or just release it when you, when you finish? It just, took, it just took so long. Are you ever going to play it? Live? No. No? Probably not. Okay. I think the record company would bum out at that answer, but say about me. Go ahead, say it. Say la vie. La vie. Thanks. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's open up the questions to our audience here. Does anyone want to ask a question of these guys? Yes, sir, back there. What's your name? Uh, Dave. Hey, Dave. Um, what band from your era do you think is the most overrated? Most what? Overrated. Overrated band from your era. They deserve their success. <laughs> They're thinking about okay, well, it. Well, that's, that's rough because you're asking us to baton out somebody, and you know, we don't want to do that, but uh, Soundgarden? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the questions? 
song over here? Yes, sir. Did the songs come out of jams, or would somebody come in with a riff, or how were they built? Did you ask me about the song or the process? Usually, yeah, it was more like coming up with riffs. Dwayne and I were kind of in charge of riffs. And either we'd come up with a little, kind of put together songs by ourselves, and we'd, we'd put together songs together and kind of just say, this is about this riff, try and why don't you help me come out with stuff with it? And then we kind of show it to Mac and David, and they do, they work their magic, and that's how that happened. Would you like to elaborate on how, how what your process was? Um, I think David kind of covered it. I mean, very often I would. David would always be a part of listening to what we were doing, even before he had vocal ideas or, you know, lyrics set. And then I think that influ obviously influenced what you would write sometimes, sometimes not, sometimes. Uh, but you'd always be a part of the whole musical idea that was you know, generated at first. Would you do like, so you'd listen to the song and be like, that's good. This I don't like that. Or I would occasionally ask, like, in structurally, I would suggest structural changes to um, accommodate whatever words I've kind of come up with. But I think you could you could fit pretty much any words to any song. It just might, might not be very good. But, you know, it'll, it'll, all, it'll all fit in there. So. Okay. I think it. I think it did. Uh, let's uh, let's open up for the uh, yes. What's, what's your name back there? Uh, Jeff. Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Ask your question, please. Yeah. Um, I'm up to fair because there's three, but I want to ask two. Like, what was it like making a record without Matt? <laughs> 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 well, that's what you do every time, so I figured it could be appropriate. Um. What was it like? And so you're, basically the question is, what was it like making the record with Jim, I guess? Um, it was it was different. It took some getting used to. Um, yeah, I think... Sorry. Um, just fucking tear into Yeah, it was difficult. It was difficult. Um, it was difficult. Uh, you know, Jim had some big shoes to fill, and... Sometimes the, the, the chemistry there just wasn't nearly as good as with uh, as, as it had been with Mac. Um, yeah, I guess the answer was it was difficult and it probably didn't work as well. I want to yeah, I'd like to point out a particular thing that happened when we were recording with Jim, uh, which was the first time that I ever realized that he's completely off his rocker. Was um, we uh, Andy Gill was producing the record, and uh, I don't remember what song it was in particular, but. The kick drum was just doing every like eighth note or sixteenth note or whatever, just the solid thing. And uh, Andy suggested, Jim, why don't you play like a pattern or something? <laughs> and uh, and just goes, what the end then? And um, and he sold up the kick drum, and you could see the meter and hear just the kick drum going. And Jim goes, that's not what I'm playing, man. <laughs> and I left the studio and drove home. I was I could not believe my ears. <laughs> but but he, I mean, how can you have to, how can you do that? You can hear it and see it. And he said that's not what he's doing. Uh, an associate that maybe. How's he doing now? Is he institutionalized? What's that? Is he institutionalized? Uh, not yet. No. <laughs> But what were the what were the cool things he brought to the project? Did he, or was it just not? About that particular project? Yeah. Uh, mostly working with Andy. Andy has a bunch of great ideas. Uh, the record is pretty cool. It's a, it's a great headphone record. It's very textural. But he's not on it, so. Oh. Okay. Uh, Do you have another question? Yes, for me. No, I don't have any. I have a question. Uh, my name is Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Dave, hey, I have a question for you. Um, as you would be uh, vocalizing on stage, you know, it's your job not to be boring. And so, like, would you have to do, like, how would you prepare yourself? Like, do you work out or would you do yoga or preparations like that? <laughs> I didn't do uh, 
than yoga. <laughs> But did you play sports when you were younger? You see, I, I played I played soccer. I was a really good, like the fastest runner on my soccer team in high school. Well, that's a lot. That's a big deal. Um, <laughs> and I went to weights when I was in high school, but then that that all, all, that was stopped in 1978. <laughs> I had a job as a landscaper. That kind of means you could hit me in the gut with a baseball bat and it would break the bat. <laughs> so those are the things, I guess, that prepared. For, um, for such a dynamic show on stage. Uh, do we have another, another show, but another question back there? Any questions? Over here. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. What is Wayne doing? What is Wayne doing? What Dwayne. Is Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne uh, was pretty busy last year uh, playing with Tomahawk. They got uh, together again and uh, put out a new record, and they toured heavily on that. I know they went to South America, to Europe, and toured the States. And uh, I saw him when he came through Chicago. Uh, it was good to see Blaine, but he, he was very busy, pretty much always on the road last year. That's what he's been up to lately. Uh, oh, he's doing uh, online guitar lessons, too. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's enjoying that. And uh, still living in Nashville. Uh, that's all I know. What do you know? <laughs> He's got a daughter named Francesca. She's cute. He lives down the street from that guy. <laughs> In Nashville? No. Um, that director with a really, really weird name. Shyamalan Dino? That guy Shyamalan? Yes. Harmony Kren. Yeah, Harley Quinn. Yeah. Did you watch uh, Spring Breakers? No, I haven't. It's pretty good. I like Spring Rolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be a good project for you to make Spring Rolls while Spring Breakers are playing in the background. You're a, you're a good cook, I understand. What's your favorite thing to make? Oh, you said I hate when people ask me that, but there has to be something. <laughs> I want to fight. I want to fight. <laughs> um, well, no, I wouldn't think that you were a good cook, but you are. And, uh, you... I've had a lot of restaurant experience and I learned a lot through um, being in uh, cooking in restaurants. And I love the, uh, you know, it's just the sort of chemistry. I like washing clothes. <laughs> are you serious? I do. I do. I mean, I don't, I don't even want to grind it. <laughs> it's not like cooking. I don't like know it. my <laughs> I watched a, uh, I watched Emperor by hand and the rest of my machine. So if anybody ever wants me to do that, I'm available. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Another one from you. Yes, sir. Dave, right? Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? So I hope I'm not breaching privacy, but I was lucky enough to like get to take some shows with these dudes, and I wouldn't ask them directly if that would be. Um, you guys, after, after being on tour with tons of bands, you guys were always in a room together when they showed up. You were always in a room together when they left. So the camaraderie between you guys is pretty awesome. I guess there's a uh, question is, is, why is that? Like, why would I show up to a show with all of you sitting in a room together, hanging out? Instead of like talking to other people? Instead of being another voice that you're disinterested or not. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it was, we were all very close. We got along very well. One of the advantages we had is that we got along very, very well. I think the chemistry within the band was also really, really good. It was kind of an intangible that was enormously valuable to us. And still, like after all these years, I have to say, these guys in a way are still three of my very favorite people ever. And uh, that's that helps the whole thing.
I, I compare it and I just feel like I've always said that I think the most important ingredient in any band is probably the chemistry of the people within the band. Like you asked, you know, the record without Mac, it was, it was Mac left, it was just it was kind of a job. And when Mac was in the band, it never felt like a job. It was <laughs> It was always great. <laughs> When it wasn't great, it was, it was fun, right? Or was it really great? Even when it wasn't fun, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> like what time? <laughs> yeah, in San Francisco, we, we pulled up and you were walking in the back, and Mac was walking up to the van, and I was in the passenger seat of the van, and he's coming up the sidewalk, and I said, Did you get a haircut? And he said, Did you? <laughs> Yeah, we can remember it's 
stuff. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a great part of the world. It's a lot of fun. Fascinating. What did you guys, I always like to ask you individually, but I'm curious, when, um, I think, I think it's, you can say that you guys are rock stars. I think it's, rock stars are rich. It's not really, though. Not, not anymore, you know, you just feel like you could be an actor and never work, but you guys are really like, you guys really put out some good music, so. So when did you realize that, oh shit, this could happen? Like. When, when in that process was like, where you were actually, you know, working as a band and making money? I think when we got to the point where we were touring enough, like the income that we were making for touring led us to be able to quit the day jobs that we had. And what was that? Yeah, yeah. Which was a wonderful, wonderful feeling. I mean, that's, that's, that's more than a dream come true, you know? I mean, if you start, if you start a band, the idea of even releasing a record to seem just preposterous, and then to get to the point where you don't have to where you, you know, make a living for it, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it can't it, it doesn't feel better than, you know, to do what you love and pay the bills. And you, well, I heard you, uh, you were either going to be a, when you were younger, you were going to be a music or going to be an artist. Uh, like, uh, and it well until punk rock kind of came on, I had planned on just going to teach art at a university or something. But um, then punk rock came on, and you know. And that was the end of that. Yeah. So what was that? What did you discover that? 1979. 1979. What was the band you like? Well, one of my best buddies and I had heard about a band called The Huns in Austin. <clears throat> and um, on Halloween night, they were going to be. In 1979, they were going to be playing in this club in Austin. And we went to see it, and it blew my mind. I'd never seen anything like that. It was uh, dangerous and fun and crazy and cool and wacky. How soon after you started did you start feeling like, oh, wait, like this is going to happen? Um, well, I, I, was in a, I was in a kind of crappy punk band. <laughs> We play where I played bass for a while, and you know, that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> but it was a blast. And then you know, we had David and I and Scratch Acid together, and um, that was a great time. We had, you know, I never sort of got to the point where we could pay our uh, bills and stuff. So it wasn't until you know several years later with the Jesus Lizard. I guess what I'm asking is. Uh, like when, as kids, like when did you think I'm gonna be around? I'm gonna be in music. Like, did you play music as a kid, pretty young? No, actually, for for I started pretty late. I only did get my first guitar until I was 16. And, uh, it was pretty late. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, and yeah, I remember getting like when I got the guitar, I just like I was trying to like figure out figure out something that could be controlled. And all I wanted to do was make like one. Seven single and I was really proud. <laughs> <laughs> when I got that first guitar, that was the reason. I win. You did? Yeah. Uh, how about you, David? I'm back. Um, yeah, I you know, heard the Beatles when I was really young and uh, really young, and I just remember thinking that was the best thing. And I, and I wanted to play electric guitar actually and took lessons for two, three times. and. I remember my teacher said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I want to play Beatles songs. And, and he says, well, what's a good one? Uh, what, which one do you like? I said, how about Day Trip? He goes, da 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 you know, And I said, yeah, I want to do that. And he goes, well, you're going to have to learn the scales and chords first, and here's your Mel Bay book. And I was like, I, I don't want to do that. And he goes, well, you're going to have to do that. I said, no, I really don't want to do that. I just want to do what you just did. And he said, no, you have to learn the scales. And so I just was like, no, I don't. My cousin played drums. I got to watch him play at a band in his face where they did like uh, Light My Fire and I got a Vita and I just thought that was the coolest thing. And drums came natural to me and I just picked it up and kind of would play along with records. But, but even back then, I, I, that's all I wanted to do. It's the only thing that really mattered. Yeah, it seems like most of most people that are successful. Oh! Uh, most people kind of like are, 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 
just, it's kind of natural. We don't really learn it, right? It's like you can't really learn. You can learn an, an instrument, but you can't really get good at it. You know, it has to come from a place where it's all, you know, inspiration. You can learn it, I think, but the best players are the people that have something natural, not something natural that's driving them, that, like their ability or some sort of understanding of that instrument that just makes sense. That, that, you, you see it all the time. Those, those are the people that just, they, they kind of get their instrument and they just, they're able to express on it without, you know, you're always learning as a musician, but those kind of musicians are the best, I think. They just like, they just naturally have something that they, they gravitate towards that. Some can play more than one instrument, but those, those are the most interesting. Okay, cool. Yes. Hey, uh, Mr. David, yeah, I had a question. Uh, uh, there's a song, I think it's called Reformation. And over a very awesome group set up by very able other members of the band, you have a, the lyrics just like a telephone call, like a guy trying to talk down to somebody from a bad trip or drunk in the house morning. Is that from a real situation or are those characters that you made up? Um, I, I made them up. I would like to add that, that it seems like it, it's helpful if the music's not too dynamic. Like, 
uh, in the van listening to Slint or Einstein's and Neubauten isn't so good because there are too much quiet parts so that's noise in the van you can't hear. Okay. Right. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Jeff? Yeah. 
Did it matter who you were playing with? When did, it, did you change in texting depending on the size of the crowd or who was playing? Absolutely not. I, I think we always, I guess, if I can pat ourselves on the back, I think one of the things about us that is kind of cool is. You guys fuck down? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> we always try to do the best we could. You know, if there were eight people, or if there were a thousand people, or if the other band was helmet, or blues explosion, or whatever, we always did the best we could. All right. Uh, we have time for one more, and then we're going to, I guess, open up that table and just sign, sign, sign. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Did I ask you something? Did he ask nice stuff? Yes, sir. Uh, The worst injury. Yeah. That's when you take some balls. Um, I think the worst one was probably the second. I call. Them, I generally call them by the town they happen in. In uh, St. Louis, uh, I had I hurt my back pretty badly, and uh, I still have a little patch that's sort of numb there. So I I guess because that was you know. Yeah, so that was in 1990 or so. So uh, that I think that win surprise is the, the worst yeah, one because it's, uh, no, I actually got tossed back onto the stage and I couldn't. I was unable to catch myself and kind of landed on the spine. Yeah, that that was the worst injury then, or just the one you remember the most? Um, I just, I, 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 because it still exists, I think that's about oh, it. I mean, they were, you know, they were still so sorry, I had to go to the hospital and stuff like that. I didn't go to the hospital like that. There were some pretty funny ones, though. <laughs> Someone throwing you back on stage is already funny, huh? Someone physically throwing you. One person? I just a group of people. It was the audience. That's great. All right. Uh, we have time for one more. Did you really want to ask a question? You're good? Yeah. All right, well, thank you for coming out. You can ask some questions. <laughs>